In Adobe Illustrator, there's a really handy tool called the Blend Tool, which allows you to make lots of copies of objects and blend them together in creative ways. Inkscape doesn't have such a tool, but it does come with a couple of extensions that, when used in tandem, can mimic the function of Illustrator's Blend Tool. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how. So getting us started here in Inkscape, the first thing we're going to have a look at is the Scatter extension, which allows you to take a single object and repeat it along a path as many times as you'd like. In order to use this extension, we're going to need a path to place our object on. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be creating a spiral. You can create whatever path you'd like. This is just the example I'm going to use for this lesson. If you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, just go ahead and pause the video and input these values up here into the tool settings for the spiral tool, and then we'll be good to get started. Once that's done, I'm going to click and drag on the canvas like that to create my spiral. And that right there represents the path that my object is going to follow. So now I have to actually create the object. For this demonstration, I'll just be using a simple circle. I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool, click and drag on the canvas, and then hold control to, to ensure that it's a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to give this a gradient just to help uh, demonstrate this effect a little better. I'm going to make this a solid fill color first of something like pink. And then I'm going to apply a gradient. So let me grab uh, the fill and stroke menu, which is located up here, or you could press Control, Shift, and F on the keyboard to access it. And up here under the fill tab, I'm just gonna click this button over here that says linear gradient. And as you can see right here, we now have a linear gradient on this object. So this half of the circle is pink. I wanna make this half a different color. So let me click on this handle right here, and I'm gonna change this color to something else. I'm gonna use a lighter shade of blue like that. And now I'm gonna take the handles of this gradient and just move this like this. I'm gonna put this one up here. I'm gonna hold control to lock it onto the axis so we have a nice vertical gradient going like that. Now what I'm gonna do, oh by the way, to zoom in and out, hold control, roll up and down the mouse wheel. So now what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the selection tool. And now in order to make this object follow along this path, we have to make sure that this object is positioned above the path. Now. Since we created the path first and then the object second, we don't have to worry about this. This is already positioned above the path here. But I just needed to point that out in case you're using this extension in other ways and you can't figure out why it works. The object always has to be positioned above the path like that. Okay, And you can change the positioning over here using these up and down. You can lower objects, raise objects. See right now the path is above the object, which is no good. We want this to be on top. Okay, so with that in place, let me select both of these objects, and I'm going to go to Extensions, Generate from Path, Scatter. Okay, so now the, the uh, settings I'm going to use here, as you can see, follow path orientation, check, stretch spaces to fit skeleton link, uh, length check, spaces between copies. I'm going to start off with negative 10, and then we'll take it from there. Normal offset, we're going to leave that at 0, 0, cloned and randomly. We're going to leave everything as it is here. And what I'm going to do once I have negative 10 put in here, I'm going to I'm going to enable the live preview. And it's going to show you what happens here. It's going to show you the object being repeated along the path. Now, if you notice, there's lots of spacing between these objects. We want the spacing to be decreased so we can have more objects so it looks more like a solid line. In order to do that, we're going to have to decrease this number here, the spaces between copies. I'm going to start off with negative 15. We started out with negative 10. I'm going to go in increments of 5. So I'm going to go down to negative 15 now and see how that looks. Okay, so that looks a little better. Now, the reason why I'm going in increments of 5 is because if you go too far too much, it's actually going to lock up this. Uh, it's going to lock up the extension and it's not going to work. You'll see here in just a minute. Let me try negative 20 now. Okay, that's looking a lot better. I'm going to go a little further just for demonstration purposes here. Let's try negative 25. And this is what happens right here. You get this error message. This means that you've gone too far for the, for your object and there's no more, like this is as much as the extension can do. Now this warning message is a good thing here because uh, a few years ago I actually made a video demonstrating how to use this extension in an older version of Inkscape. And once you go too far, what it used to do is it used to crash your system and you had to restart everything. Now they've added this uh, fix in there that stops it from crashing. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And we're going to go back to 20, and we're going to try 21 instead. Okay, that looks good. Let's try 22. 
and that's too far. So it looks like 21 is the max. I'm going to set it to 21. And once I'm finished, I'm going to click OK or apply and then close. And there you go. It generated that object right there, kind of like how the blend tool works in Adobe Illustrator. OK, now if you zoom in on this, you can see it just consists of lots of tiny individual circles. You may be able to see some of the color banding in there. That's because this is a bunch of individual circles. OK, but if you zoom out, it looks nice and fluid, nice and smooth like that. So now let's have a look at the other extension in Inkscape that allows you to perform some of the functions that the Blend tool does in Illustrator. This would be the Interpolate tool. So to demonstrate what Interpolate does, let me create a text object. I'm going to grab my text tool. I'm going to click on the canvas right here, and I'm going to type BLEND in all caps. I'm going to triple click the text to highlight it, and I'm going to change the font by clicking on the text editor up here. And the font I'm using for this demonstration is called League Gothic, which is right there. Click Apply, and there we go. Let me get out of this menu because it otherwise slows the system down. Let me grab the Selection tool now. Let me make this larger. Hold Control while I'm scaling to ensure that it maintains the aspect ratio. And I'm going to put this copy over here. Maybe I'll make this a little smaller. I want to make this uh, a, a different color. I want to make this yellow. And what I want to do is change this from a text object to an actual path. Otherwise, this is not going to work. This interpolate extension, it only works on objects that are paths. So to convert this to a path, I'll go to Path, Object to Path. And now I need to ungroup it. I'll go to Object, Ungroup. And then I'll unify it all together by going to Path, Union. And now I'm going to duplicate this object by right-clicking it and going to Duplicate. And I'll make this one bigger. I'm holding Control while I'm scaling here to maintain the aspect ratio. And I'll move this one down here. And I'm going to change this to a different color. I'll go with pink. And now I'm going to select both of these objects at the same time, go to Extensions, Generate from Path, and Interpolate. Now the settings I'll be using here, as you can see, the exponent is one interpolation steps. This is the number of copies that'll be created between these two. I'm going to start out with five, and then I'll take it from there. And these settings, as you can see here, we want to leave these settings as you see on my screen. And once you're ready, click Live Preview. And as you can see, it took the two objects and created five copies of them based on their properties. Now, as you can see, these copies, they range in size. They go from large to small, as these two objects did. And then the color transitions as well, as you can see there. So if I could actually, I could actually increase this from five to something like 10. And then you end up with something like that. Or I could even go as far as 20. And then you end up with something like that. Go a little further, 30. Now it's looking more fluid like that. And unlike the other extension, I don't think this one has a break off point where it locks up and closes. I think you could go infinitely with this. So that's 40. Here's how 50 looks. And there you go. I think you should get the idea. Let me bring this back down to something a little more reasonable, like 10. Click Apply and then Close. And then once you're finished, as you can see here, it created new copies from this. So your original copies are still there in place. You don't need to make duplicates. You don't need to make backup copies because it's just going to generate a new copy based on this. And if you want to edit this further, you could just go to Object, Ungroup. And now, as you can see, this consists of a bunch of individual objects that were generated using that extension. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about working around uh, a lack of the Blend tool in Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.